The reason you aren't getting views on YouTube might shock you. And this is a perfect example of what a lot of you guys might be doing. This is Noah Kagan's YouTube channel and they used to be posting three times a week and a lot of their videos just didn't get a lot of views. Now this wasn't working for them. So they decided to do something kind of bizarre, which was to post less videos. And as a result, they actually 10 X their views. Now is posting less an actual strategy for getting more views on YouTube? Actually it is, but you need to make sure you do it the right way and not the wrong way. Because the key here is that posting less doesn't mean spending less time on your YouTube channel or putting less effort into your videos. It just means that with less videos, you can actually put more time and more effort into that video. But the first thing you need to ask yourself is, does my audience in my niche, do they value quality or do they value quantity? There's a lot of YouTube channels out there where they really value quality over quantity. They wouldn't care if you posted every single day. They just care when you post amazing YouTube videos. And if you don't believe me, check out this YouTube channel, Patty Galloway. Now you can see here that Patty posts about once a month. So he really doesn't post that often, but he gets a ton of views. And the crazy thing is he hasn't even posted in five months. But if you go over to his statistics, you can see in the past 30 days, he still has gotten 311,000 views. And Patty has helped tons of YouTube channels do this as well. Like Noah that I talked about earlier, as well as this channel, Jesser. Jesser was posting seven days a week and then they changed it up and started posting one to two times a week and they had a four times increase in their views. Now this guy, Patty Galloway, who is helping all these creators actually gave a speech at Vid Summit that I went to and I took notes, a lot of notes. Now the big overview of his talk really came down to three things, idea, packaging and video. So let's start with the first thing, which is the idea. And this is so, so important. And again, this is Patty Galloway's talk that I'm gonna be summarizing and giving my thoughts on. Give him some love in the description. We have a link to his channel. Go subscribe, let him know you're from Think Media. Now, Patty talked about how ideas for him come from three different places. And that first one is internally. Now, how you do this is you look at your top performing videos and you see if there's a way that you could repeat them and make them different, or if you could even build a series around these videos that do really well on your channel. Now, the second way to come up with ideas is externally, and this is to find overperforming videos on other YouTube channels and to see if there's something that you can adapt from their channels onto your channel. Here's a great example. So let's say I'm looking for an external idea for Think Media, which is YouTube education, creator economy, and I stumble across this video, which is a month old and has 219,000 views. And I see that he only has 65,000 subscribers. So I know this is overperforming for his channel. Now, this video idea is called I spent seven days working in the metaverse. Now I'm starting to think, how can I implement this into my own niche? Now, just off the top of my head, some videos that I could do for my niche would be I spent seven days making YouTube shorts. I spent seven days editing a YouTube video. These are just some examples to take what was in someone else's niche and then to make it my own. Now, the third way to come up with ideas is to innovate. Try and think of something brand new that has never been done before and see if you can actually do something first. Patty actually innovated on his YouTube channel. Back in the day, there was this rise of these like film video essays and also these whiteboard explainer videos. And he decided he was going to try and take that style, that format of video and apply it to the YouTube education niche. And no one was doing this at the time. He then talks about how he asked himself, what would it look like if he made a YouTube education video that got 1 million views? And from that, he made the video, how Peter McKinnon gained 1 million subscribers in under one year. It was the first video to blow up on his channel. Another major takeaway about ideas is he talks about the 110 one rule. And this is that you want to come up with a hundred ideas. And then from this, you're going to narrow it down to your 10 best ideas. And from there, you are going to pick the best idea that you're going to make next. Ultimately, you just don't want to make the very first video idea that comes to your mind because the idea is so important. You really want to brainstorm multiple ideas and then try and find the best one within those ideas. Hey, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Podcastle. Whether you want to do a solo podcast or have all of your friends on, Podcastle allows you to have up to 10 remote guests at a time. One of the coolest parts about this is that each person is going to be recorded locally 
locally on separate tracks. And it's really easy for bringing guests on because they don't even need a Podcastle account. You just need to send them their link and then they can come onto your show. Podcastle even has a mobile app, which makes it really easy for recording and exporting your content on the go. They truly make it as simple as possible to produce your podcast. Thank you so much, Podcastle, for sponsoring this video. Most YouTubers are overlooking packaging and not even doing this at all, but this is so, so important. Let me tell you why. Let's just say you have the best video in the world, but the title and your thumbnail looks like this. Let me ask you, how many people do you think are gonna click on that video? Not many people, but let's say you keep this same amazing video and you come up with a brand new title and a brand new thumbnail like this. Even though it's the same exact video, this video is gonna get way more clicks and way more views. And actually 570,000 people decided to click on this video in the last four months. And Shervin only has 34,000 subscribers. And so he's reaching a brand new audience and actually growing his YouTube channel. And a huge part of that is packaging. So let's talk about practical advice for titles and thumbnails, and we'll start with titles first. Patty's first tip for titles was volume, volume, volume. They actually come up with 45 different titles for just one YouTube video. And this is something we do at Think Media. We don't come up with 45 titles, but sometimes we'll come up with eight, 10, 20 different titles just to find the best one possible. His second point to come up with better titles is to focus on human interest. And he shared this really cool story about how they had a really great YouTube video and they're trying to come up with a title. And the first one they came up with was inside a $1.7 million New York loft. Now they didn't really love this title. They thought it was nothing interesting. And so they decided to come up with a few more ideas. So they ended up coming with, I found the best loft in New York and they thought this one was better. They thought they improved it and it would get more clicks. But after brainstorming a little bit more, they came up with, I found the best loft in NYC, dot, 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 but nobody wants it. And the reason this worked so well for that YouTube video is it opened up a curiosity gap. My major takeaway and something that you guys can start doing right now is try to implement curiosity into your titles just a little bit more and I think they might perform better. Now, of course, packaging also includes thumbnails and he gave some really, really good advice on where to spend your time when creating a thumbnail. Now there was four different things, but the first thing he talked about was to study high performing thumbnails. And it was very clear that you don't just wanna copy other people's thumbnails. You really wanna try and understand why that thumbnail worked and why it made you want to click on that video. Now, the second place to spend your time is getting deep in thumbnail psychology. One of the things that I found super interesting was Patty actually doesn't like when YouTubers use these very big expression faces on their thumbnails. He talked about how often when you have this big expression, you could be giving away too much about the video in the thumbnail and it might make someone not want to click. If you think about it, it kind of makes sense. If you have this big reaction on your face, people can see the YouTube video and they already know how you're going to react. But if your facial expression is a bit more subtle and people don't know if you're gonna be happy about this, sad, excited, or scared, this could produce a lot more curiosity. Now, of course, this isn't gonna work for every single video and every single niche on YouTube, but this is really interesting. And the unlock for me was just like in titles, you also wanna be using that thumbnail to produce more curiosity. His third tip for spending time on thumbnails was to make multiple concepts. He talks about how it's way better to make multiple thumbnails in one hour and not just one thumbnail in one hour. And I loved this tip because there's been a lot of times where I've spent an hour or even more trying to make a thumbnail. And then when I show it to some of my friends, they actually just don't like it. They don't like the idea of the thumbnail. And instead of me spending all this time on a thumbnail that wasn't good in the first place, I should have just made a few different concepts and then shown those to my friends and said, which one do you like the most? And then I can finish off the one that I think will do the best. Now, the fourth thing he talked about was when something works, you need to double down on that thumbnail design. Mike Shake has a perfect example of this in a video where he was learning to draw a perfect circle. This video did really, really well for him. And the thumbnail actually was really, really awesome. And he decided to reuse this in multiple different videos where all those videos performed really well. So that's idea and packaging. And then the third thing he talks about is the video. And I made an entire video breaking down his training of this. So click on the screen and I'll see you guys in the next video.